What's up folks, welcome to the part 4, of what if Deku get reborn as a vampire, chapter 20. Izuku has made his way home after his fight with the hero killer Stain and is currently drinking whiskey while talking to Dobby about it. Then he gave me his phone number and I came here. Says Izuku. I still can't believe you let him stab you just to put your pistol to his head. Says Dobby. I still can't believe my weakness is silver. I don't have very many weaknesses but the ones I, do have are bullshit. Says Izuku. Like crosses and holy water? Asks Dobby. Yeah and running water burns me but that's not so bad. It's why I bathe instead of shower. Says Izuku. If holy water and religious symbols hurt you does that mean God is real? Asks Dobby. Maybe. It kinda looks like it. Says Izuku. So there's a heaven and a hell. Says Dobby. Probably but I'm not too concerned with, that personally. Says Izuku. Why not? Asks Dobby. Monsters don't go to heaven. Says Izuku as he gulps down a shot of whiskey. Maybe you'll find a way. Says Dobby. Maybe. Says Izuku. With all the good you do, especially tonight. Seriously man you took out two gangs and fought Stain in one night. You must have been hauling ass around town. Says Dobby. I didn't take down two gangs. Says. Is Yuku. Well someone did. They left claw marks. The news said it was you. Says Dobby. I didn't do that, and if it just happened how did it get on the news so fast? Asks Is Yuku. They were talking about you and they briefly mentioned a vigilante stopping two gangs. They seemed to think it was you, but I guess it wasn't. Says Dobby. So you think there is some new vigilantes around? Asks Is Yuku. Apparently. Says Dobby. Well I'll take tomorrow off then see if the new guy or maybe new guys can handle it. Says Izuku. I didn't imagine you would take time off unless you got beat bad. Says Dobby. Usually I wouldn't but I want this to heal. Says Izuku as he points to his stab wound. Makes sense. Says Dobby. Where is Toga? Asks Izuku. She's asleep. Speaking of sleep. I'm gonna go to, sleep now. Says Dobby. I'll see you in the morning. Says Izuku. See you in the morning. Says Dobby as he walks off to his room. Izuku takes several days off while his stab wound heals. During this time the vigilantes continue to do his work for him. He spends most of his time working on his song and practicing his bass guitar. One night after Dobby and Toga had gone to sleep Izuku was struck with inspiration and managed to finish his song. He looked at the clock and realized that it was 7.30 in the morning and that Dobby and Tolga are gonna wake up soon. He wants to share his work with them. He looks over the song and finds he truly loves what he wrote. Despite the situation he was in holding no comedic value he began to laugh. He wasn't sure what he was laughing at. It was quiet but, lasted a long time. He just felt so relieved and happy he couldn't help himself. He grabbed his bass guitar began strumming it to his song and quietly sang to himself. He found that he loved not only listening to the song as he sang but the action of singing it. He couldn't wait for Toga and Dobby to get up so he could show it to them. Despite his impatience he waited until Dobby and Toga were both, up. By the time they were up his Yuku made eggs with bacon for them. The two ate them in the kitchen while Izuku waited for them to finish, when they were done Izuku decided to tell them about his song. Hey guys. Says Izuku. What's up man? Asks Dobby. What's crackin'? Asks Toga. Remember how I was trying to write a song? Asks Izuku. Yeah, I do. Says Dobby. Yeah, why? Asks Toga. Well I, finished writing it. Says Izuku. Oh my gosh let us hear it. Says Toga. Yeah, I wanna give it a listen. Says Dobby. Yeah, I'll play it for you but first I have to go over why I made it. My inspiration. All that jazz. Says Izuku. Is it jazz? Asks Toga. All that soft rock. Corrects Izuku. That's cool too. Says Toga. I made this because of an old friend of mine. We drifted apart over the, 
years and at this point we just hate each other. The last time we spoke it was sort of civil but I really just wanted to beat his ass. He always acted so damn high and mighty like he was better than everyone else. The song doesn't quite cover every aspect of our relationship but I honestly don't want it to. I don't want to talk or think about it so I'll leave parts out. Says as Yuku. Sounds like a long story. Says Toga. It's about 10 years long. Says as Yuku. Wow, you've known this guy for a while, what made you split apart? Asks Tabi. No comment. Says as Yuku. That's fine. Says Dobby. I'm gonna play the song for you now. Says Izuku while turning his necklace into the bass guitar. Sounds good. Says Toga. La da 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 I'm gonna bury you in the ground la da 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 I'm gonna bury you with my sound sorry I don't treat you like a goddess, is that what you want me to do? Sorry I don't treat you like you are perfect like all your little loyal subjects too sorry I'm not made of sugar am I not sweet enough for you? Is that why you always avoid me? That must be such an inconvenience to you well. I'm just your problem I'm just your problem it's like I'm not even a person, am I? I'm just your problem well, I shouldn't have to justify what I do. I shouldn't have to prove anything to you I'm sorry that I exist. I forget what landed me on your blacklist but I shouldn't have to be the one that makes up to you so. Why do I want to? Why do I want to? Is Yuku zones back into reality to see Dobby and Toga staring at him with blank expressions and open mouths. So, how did I do? Asks Is Yuku. Where did that come from? Asks Dobby incredulously. My relationship with my old buddy? Says Is Yuku unsure of exactly what Dobby means. Not that, the voice. Says Dobby. Yeah, what's with that? You never told us you could sing. Says Toga. I guess I thought it would be better to show you. Says as Yuku. Well shit I guess. Says Dobby. So it was a girl. Asks Toga. No it's a dude but I, no he'd be mad if I called him a goddess. Says as Yuku. I wouldn't mind you calling me a goddess. Says Toga. I don't need to tell you what you what you already know. Says as Yuku. Get a room. Says Dobby. You are in my house. Says as Yuku. Good point. Says Dobby. Didn't Grant say he could get you to perform somewhere? Asks Toga. Yeah he did but I'm not sure about going up in front of people, and performing. Says as Yuku. You went in front of us. Says Dobby. Well yeah. I live with you guys. Says as Yuku. Fair point but I want to date a musician. Says Toga. Well, I still make music. Says as Yuku. Until you go on stage you're not a musician. Says Toga. Okay, a little rude but okay. Says as Yuku. Do it for me. Says Toga as she bats her eyelashes at his Yuku. Fine but only because, bills are expensive and groceries and gas. Says as Yuku. Are we low on money? Asks Tabi. If I don't do something to make more money we will be eventually. Or if something happens and I have to spend a lot of money, but we should be fine if I can perform regularly. Says as Yuku. Well alright. If you need me to bring in some money I can go on jobs for Grin. Says Dobby. I don't want that to happen. We'll be fine unless something major happens and even then we'll probably slip by. Says as Yuku. Alright if you're sure? Says Dobby. Yeah. It's cool. I should go to Grin now and see about anything he can book me for. Says as Yuku. Can I come? Asks Toga. Can I come too? Asks Dobby. Yeah, to both of you. Says as Yuku. The three of them make their way across the street to Grin's car, shop. Hey there G. Calls out is Yuku. How you doing kid? Asks Grin, he notices Toga and Dobby behind him. You need work? Sort of. It isn't exactly what we usually do. Says as Yuku. He finished his song. Says Toga excitedly. It's good. Nice lyrics and apparently he can sing well. Says Dobby. Well let's hear it. Says Grin. Izuku proceeds to play his bass and sing his song. When he 
finish as he looks at Grin who is currently smiling from ear to ear. Kid we're gonna go places with that song. Says Grin. You think so? Asks Izuku. With my influence and your music we can shit done. We might need to make you look tough and rock starish. Have you considered getting a tattoo? Says Grin. I've considered getting a pentagram on the back of my hand. Like a joke because I'm, a monster. Like a half demon or something. Says Izuku. Wait. Monster? Asks Toga. Oh yeah, I never told you about not being a human. Did I? Says Izuku. My boyfriend's a monster. Says Toga. Well you're not exactly a saint. Says Izuku. No I'm excited. Says Toga. Oh shit. I thought you were like weirded out or something. Says Izuku. No this is cool. What kind of monster are you? Asks, Toga. Dobby I don't want to explain all of this again. Can you cover for me on this one? Also cover the thing with Stain please I never mentioned that. Says Izuku. Sure you just settle things with Grin and leave the rest to me. Says Dobby. Izuku and Grin worked out a time and a place for a performance. In about a week from now a music festival is going to take place and local musicians are, performing. A vote gets taken at the end to decide who had the best song. The winner gets a small cash prize and recognition as a talented artist. After working out all the details which took way longer than expected. It was near dark. Dobby and Toga were already home and Izuku is a little hungry so he decided he'd go out tonight. His stab wound was mostly closed it still healed faster than it, normally would do to his vampirism which he was grateful for. Izuku was back in his suit jumping around the city. He saw someone breaking into a house and swiftly knocked them out. He dropped him off at the nearest police station with a note and continued to patrol. He was jumping over roof once again, when he heard the sound of footsteps following him. He looks back and a man with an obvious, speed enhancer quirk was heading towards him. He stops and waits for the man to catch up. The man is wearing black pants, boots, and an overcoat. He has a black bandana pulled over his nose and gray hair down to his shoulder and gray eyes. He also has a katana slung over his shoulder. Hey, what's up man? Calls is Yuku. I've been looking for you. Says the man as he gets closer. I can tell. Says is Yuku. Izuku looks behind him and sees a man with wolf-like attributes behind him. The man about 7 feet tall and wearing ripped jeans with no top. I'm surrounded. The one with the speed quirk slowed down a while before stopping. He can't stop on command. I can use his momentum against him. Thinks Izuku. What can I do for you? Asks Izuku. We want you to join us. Says the man in black. Are you two those new vigilantes? Asks, Izuku. We are. We actually started separately but began working together. Says the wolf man. Cool how did you meet? Asks Izuku. We fought the same group of villains. Says the wolf man. Cool so what do I call you? Asks Izuku. I'm Victor. Says the wolf man. Don't give away your name. Says the man in black. It's fine it's Katsuiki. Says Victor. Victor are you Russian? Asks Izuku. Yeah. Replies Victor proudly. Nice accent. It's cool. Says Izuku. Thank you. Says Victor. What about you? What's your name? Asks Izuku while looking at the man in black. I haven't thought of it. Just call me Katana. Says Katana. That's kinda weak. We can work on it later. For the time being let's find somewhere more comfortable to talk. Says Izuku. Sure. We can go to this little stand, pick up some beers and talk under this cool bridge I know. Says Victor. You hang out under bridges often? Asks Izuku. I found a couple of couches down there while on a jog and rest there sometime. Says Victor. Alright buddy lead the way. Says Izuku. Follow me little buddy. Says Victor cheerfully. Chapter 21. Izuku, Victor and Katani had just picked up a couple packs of beer and were, headed to Victor's bridge. 
When they got there as Yuku saw three couches in a triangle arrangement around a trash can. Take a seat. Make yourself at home. I'm gonna start a fire in the trash can. You know gotta stay warm and all of that. Says Victor. Cool thanks man. Says as Yuku. Thank you. Says Kate Anna. Help yourself to some beer. Says Victor as he starts a fire in the trash can. Is Yuku and Victor both grab a beer and sit down. Kate Anna chooses not to drink. So if we're gonna work together, I think we should know each other's goals. I'm gonna need some help with mine. Says Victor. I got you man. I can tell you're cool. I got your back. Says as Yuku. Thanks little buddy. Says Victor, or we could talk about why we became vigilantes. That's cool too. Says as Yuku, you want me to, go first? Sure, if you don't mind sharing. Says Victor. So a while back a friend of mine was getting attacked by a villain. None of the heroes nearby had a good quirk for the situation. They just sort of stood there. I ran in and saved my buddy without even using my quirk. It's hard to have faith in heroes when you watch them just stand there and watch someone get hurt. And yeah maybe it was, better to stay back but that's not what heroes do. I looked into things further and realized lots of heroes aren't exactly keen on helping out if they end up in danger. So now I do their work. Says as Yuku. Did your friend end up okay? Asks Victor. I got hit by the villain but was able to throw him out of the way in time. Says as Yuku. Good job man. It's cool of you to have your friends back, says Victor. Yeah, but he wasn't exactly the type of guy to have my back so we don't talk much anymore. Says as Yuku. I'm sorry to hear about that. Says Victor. It's fine. I got some new friends now. These guys may not be the kindest or very great people but they're the kind to have your back no matter what. It's why I hang out with them you know. Tired of people who can't be a loyal friend. Says, is Yuku. I'm glad to hear you have such good friends. Says Victor. So what's your deal? Like, why did you become a vigilante? Asks is Yuku. Well I moved to Japan for work and met my new neighbor. We got to talking for a while. I realized I liked her and she felt the same way so we started dating. Eventually we got married and had a kid. One day the syndicate known as the Sapphire Serpent was, robbing a store and my wife and daughter saw them. The syndicate doesn't exactly leave witnesses. Replies Victor, I wanna tear the whole damn syndicate to the ground. I'm down but are you sure we can take out the serpent? I've talked with a buddy of mine and apparently it's one of the largest most powerful criminal organizations in Japan. Says as Yuku. I know I probably can't take it down, but with the two of you we could damage it a lot. And I know Katsuiki, you've worked with two other vigilantes before. The five of us could deal some major damage. Says Victor. That's not a bad idea but how are we gonna find them? Asks is Yuku. I may not be able to lead us to the serpent. But I do know the location of lots of gangs around Japan that none of us have hit yet. Some of them are, gonna be quite the drive. Says Kate Anna. That's good to know. I can get us some gang locations but my informant only has a couple more that he's fine with me hitting. Says as Yuku. Is your informant a villain? Asks Kate Anna. Well, yeah. But he still isn't that bad of a guy. He really does want to help out when he can. He just needs some money. Says as Yuku. What does he need it for? Asks Kate Anna, I don't know exactly. Says as Yuku. How can you trust him? The three of us should says Kate Anna before getting cut off. Hey! Shout says Yuku, I said he's fine. Is Yuku says at a normal volume Kate Anna looks at him for a while before saying, If you're sure? I am. Replies as Yuku. Fellas we could maybe try to get along a little better. Says Victor. Yeah, you're right. Says as Yuku. Sorry for, raising my voice. It's fine. I shouldn't have acted the way I did. Says Kate Anna. Anyways. Kate Anna what got you started on vigilantism? Asks Victor. I'd really rather not talk about that. Sorry to leave you without an answer. 
says Kate Anna. It's fine man. You don't have to open up if you don't feel comfortable. Says Victor. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to answer if you don't want to. Says, is you cool? Thank you. Replies Kate Anna quietly. So are we in agreement on working together? Asks Victor. I'm down for fighting with you guys. Says as you coo. I'm in. Says Kate Anna. Great. Says Victor, we should exchange can arrange times to meet and targets to go after. That sounds like a plan. Says as you coo. The three of them exchange numbers and Victor makes a vigilante group chat. The three. Agree that they will meet up again before they go on their first job together to talk about their quirks and see if they can come up with some strategies for villains they might chase. Izuku continues his patrol but doesn't manage to find anything. He heads back home to talk with Dobby and Toga. Hey Dobby! Says Izuku as he sits on the couch and starts drinking. Hey, man what's up? Asks Dobby. We were right about there being two new vigilantes. They want to work with me. Says as Yuku. Oh really, what can they do? Asks Dobby. Well, Victor either has a wolf mutation quirk or can transform at will. We're gonna meet up and talk more later. Kate Annie has a speed enhancer quirk. I don't know for sure but I think he's faster than I am. Says as Yuku. Wait, his name is Kate Anna? Asks Dobby. Yeah, replies is Yuku. Does he have a Kate Anna? Asks Dobby. Yeah, replies is Yuku. You know you're gonna have to work on that name right? Asks Dobby. Yeah, I was thinking the quickster replies is Yuku. Speed man. Says Dobby. Quick guy? Says is Yuku. No. Replies Dobby. Fine. Says is Yuku. The two sit in silence for a while before Dobby decides to speak up. How are you feeling about that concert you're gonna play at? Asks Dobby. I don't know. I'm a little worried. I'm also pretty excited. You and Toga have to come. It's the rules, you gotta show up to my concerts. Says as Yuku. Of course I'm gonna be there. Toga has to show up y'all are dating. Grin will show up he's your manager. Is Ruby gonna come? Asks Dobby. Oh yeah. I should tell Ruby about that. Says as Yuku. She'll enjoy it. Says Dobby, I hope so. Maybe I can impress Toga with my outstanding stage presence. Says as Yuku. Have you performed on a stage before? Asks Dobby. No, why? Asks is Yuku. No reason. Says Dobby. The two of them chuckle to their stupid little joke. You know what Dobby? Asks is Yuku. What's up man? Asks Dobby. I hate to do this to you. But I want to go out and do something with Toga. Says is Yuku. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while since you two did that. Says Dobby. Damn, really? Asks is Yuku. Yeah man. Replies Dobby. Shit. I gotta get on that. Says is Yuku as he walks upstairs to find Toga. He knocks on the door to her room. Come in. Says Toga. He follows her instructions. Hey babe. Says is Yuku. What up baby? Asks Toga. You wanna go on a date? Asks is Yuku. Sure, when? Asks Toga. Now, replies is Yuku. Oh damn, what do you have in mind? Asks Toga. Nothing yet. I was gonna wing it. Says as Yuku. Cool let's go. Says Toga. Nice, actually let me change first I can't go dressed like a vigilante. Is Yuku puts on a pair of jeans and a red flannel shirt with his signature red shoes. You ready to go? Asks is Yuku. Damn, babe you looking fresh. Let's go. Replies Toga. The two get into is Yuku's car. So what are we doing? Asks Toga. Wanna drive around and look for something interesting? Asks is Yuku. Yeah sure. Says Toga. The two drive around for a while before seeing a karaoke bar. Wanna try karaoke? Asks Toga. Yeah, sure. Says is Yuku. The two park the car and head inside. 
They get directed to their own room with a table and a karaoke machine. Babe before we start singing, the night away we should order, drinks. Says Toga. You drink. I have to drive us home. Says Izuku. Come on babe. Loosen up drink a little. I've already had a bit to drink. I shouldn't drink anymore. Says Izuku. Toga gives him the look for a little while. He holds eye contact. In the end he loses. All right, all right, I'll have a whiskey. But that's all I'm drinking. Says Izuku. This was not true. He would be drinking a lot, more than we thought. When the waiter came in and they ordered drinks the waiter was inclined to ask some questions. Are you old enough for this? Asks the waiter. Is it that important? Asks Izuku. The waiter chuckles. All right I'll get your drinks. You two have fun. Izuku and Toga sing a song together before the waiter gets back with their drinks. The two stay until the place closes at 2 a.m. They sang lots of songs and drink a lot. To be perfectly honest the two of them were plastered. After all this they were about to head back home. Babe, I can't unlock my car. Says Izuku. Why not? Asks Toga while slurring her words. I lost my keys in my pocket. They're too deep I can't reach all the way down there. Says Izuku. Why why you'll wanna sit on the hood and wait until they come out? Asks Toga. How did you say, until with two L's? Asks Izuku. I don't know man, I just don't know anymore. Says Toga as she sits on the hood of Izuku's car and lays back. Damn. I'm sorry to hear about that. Says Izuku slowly as he sits on the hood of his car and lays back. How are we gonna get home? Asks Toga. You could ride on top of me. Says Izuku. Oh you'd let me ride you? Says, Toga. Izuku didn't seem to pick up on the fact that Toga is flirting with him. Yeah, I'm really good at giving rides. I got super strength so I go fast. And regeneration helps with my endurance. Says Izuku. Toga seemed to think that Izuku was flirting back but he has no idea what he's talking about. What else can you do? Asks Toga. I can do this. Says Izuku as he sticks out his elongated, tongue as far as it can go, pretty cool right? You gotta get me home right now. Says Toga. Okay. Says Izuku as he pulls his keys out of his pocket and unlocks the car. Izuku drives the two home. While drunk driving is a serious problem Izuku's enhanced senses and reaction time makes it closer to driving while sober. They finally get home and drunkenly stumble through the front door. You, ready? Asks Toga. For what? Asks Izuku. Come on babe, you were all flirty earlier. Says Toga. Shoot, was I? Asks Izuku. Look baby do you wanna fuck or not? Asks Toga. I'm gonna be honest here. If I were any less drunk, I'd probably say no. But right now, fuck it. Says Izuku. Chapter 22. Izuku woke up the next morning around noon with Toga passed out next to him sleeping peacefully. He, got out of bed despite his hangover. He used his sheer force of will to fight his migraine and make brunch for Dobby, who was watching TV on the couch and for Toga who was currently slumped. When he finished making brunch he left a glass of water on the nightstand for Toga to drink when she wakes up. It was then he decided to check his phone. He noticed that Victor and Katana had decided to meet up, under Victor's bridge later tonight and were waiting on his response. He told them he'd be there. So where did you go last night? Asks Dobby. Karaoke bar. Replies as Yuku. You know you still smell like alcohol. Says Dobby. I drank a lot yesterday. I had a couple beers with the vigilantes. I had some whiskey with you. Toga and I drank way too much. We got fucked up. I probably shouldn't have, drove home but it turned out okay I think. I don't remember that much to be honest. Says Izuku. Well, you must have had fun. Says Dobby. Yeah, we did. Says Izuku. Do you think you should tone down the alcohol? Asks Dobby. Maybe, but it doesn't fuck up my liver. And that thing about alcohol killing brain cells is a myth. Says Izuku. 
That's not what concerns me. Says Dobby. Then what's bothering you? Asks Izuku. You want to be a hero eventually right? Asks Dobby. I'm not entirely sure but I guess it would be nice. Says Izuku. Well a hero can't be drinking all the time. Says Dobby. I can speed up my regeneration to get rid of alcohol's effects. Says Izuku. Didn't you drive home drunk last night? Asks Dobby. Yeah, but that was a one-time thing. Says Izuku. At first I thought drinking was gonna be a one-time thing for me and now I can't seem to go a day without it. Says Dobby. Well, I could be doing worse things. I could be doing cocaine or heroin. You know I could get my hands on it. Grin could set me up easy. Says Izuku. I guess it could be a lot worse, and yeah you're right about Grin being able to set you up with the goods. I get all my stuff from, him. Says Dobby. Whoa, what stuff? Do you have weed? Asks Izuku. Do I look like a stoner to you? Asks Dobby. Well. No sorry. Says Izuku. You bum. The answer was yes. Says Dobby as he pulls out a small Ziploc bag from his jacket. Nice. Says Izuku. Wanna try some? Asks Dobby. You know it Dobby. Says Izuku. Be warned this grass will kick your ass. Says Dobby. I've had my ass kicked a lot, more than you'd think. I'm used to it by now. So hand it over. Says Izuku. Well, shit brother I can't say no to that. Says Dobby as he rolls a joint and hands it to Izuku. Hey, can you light this? Asks Izuku. Hell yeah brother. Says Dobby as he shoots a beam of fire out of his finger and lights Izuku's joint. Thanks man. Says Izuku. No problem. Says Dobby. Izuku spent a large portion of the day lounging around with Dobby. Toga came down and had breakfast. Not long after she said there was something she wanted to do today. Izuku and Dobby didn't mind her heading out too much. She's tough and can handle herself. They were both fairly certain that she was out for blood but neither of them felt they had the right to say anything about it given their circumstances. Izuku liked smoking, but figured that he wouldn't take from Dobby's supply. Or at least he wouldn't take too much. Before Izuku and Dobby knew it. It was getting late before Izuku or Dobby knew it. It was at this point Izuku and Dobby got worried and decided that they should go look for her. At least that was what they were thinking before they heard a knock on the door. Who do you think it is? Would she rat on us if she got arrested? Asks Dobby. It's her. I can't smell her, and she's alone. We've got nothing to worry about. Says Izuku as he calmly walks up to the door and opens it. Dobby's worries were in vain as Togo happily strolls through the door with a shopping cart. Oh you went shopping. You get anything interesting? Asks Izuku. I stole a bunch of stuff. Says Togo happily, and I stabbed somebody. They dead? Asks Izuku. No. I'm reforming myself. I'm just gonna hurt people not kill them. Says Togo. That's great honey. By the way, what were you out stealing? Asks Izuku. Just a couple of things. I stole some eyeliner and lipstick for me. Some staples for Dobby. Says Toga. Thanks. Says Dobby. And some cigarettes for you. Says Toga as she opens one of the bags in the card to show. It's completely filled with cigarettes. Wow thanks. This'll last me a while. Says Izuku. And I stole some whiskey for the three of us. Says Toga as she opens several bags to reveal an excessive amount of whiskey. Well thank you for that. It'll save us some money. Says Izuku before he starts looking thoughtful for a moment. Can I talk with you about something? Yeah sure. Wanna talk in, your room? Asks Toga. Yeah, follow me. Says Izuku as he works his way to his room. When they close the door to Izuku's room Toga speaks up. Is this about the robbery? Asks Toga. Sort of. The robbery made it come to mind. Says Izuku. Well, what is it? Asks Toga. What happens to us? Our relationship, if one of us gets arrested? 
asks is Yuku. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, says Toga. I know I have heroes after me. I fought with Eraserhead I talk with him sometimes. He thinks taking me in will help me. His roommates feel the same way. So because of him I've got present Mick and Midnight out looking for me. When I fought Muscular I met Myruko. I think she's after me too. She likes to work alone but if people find out Myruko is looking for me small heroes will come after me looking for the fame of beating one of the top 10. And if Eraserhead talks to Nezu I might get the entire UA staff after me. Eraserhead's quirk and Midnight's quirk don't work on me. Present mix would be difficult to deal with. Rambles is Yuku. Calm down. I get it. It's stressful to have so many people looking to change your life. You want to be the one to make the choice. You'll manage. You're strong. You beat muscular. Says Toga. I didn't beat muscular. Says as Yuku. You took his eye and his ear. If the two of you fought again who do you think would win? Asks Toga. Well I did find out a way to beat him. I just have to rely more heavily on my claws and fangs to rip through his muscles but he's still stronger than I am. Says as Yuku. Look, my point is you're strong and I'm sneaky, we'll be fine. Says Toga. I know, it's just. What if we aren't? Asks is Yuku. Okay if you got arrested would you want me to move on or wait for you to get out? Asks is Yuku. Well I'd want you to move on sure, but if when I get out we find each other maybe we could be something again. Says as Yuku. And if I get arrested you can move on. It's not wrong to move on life's about moving on. Says, Toga. Yeah. I guess you're right. Says as Yuku before looking at a clock. I'd love to spend more time with you but I have to meet with some people. Good luck with whatever you're doing. And be safe. Says Tolga as Yuku quickly changes into his suit grabs his gun and heads out to meet with Victor and Katana. He hops across the rooftops to Victor's bridge. Why this man hangs out under bridges is beyond him but hey don't knock until you've tried it as they say. He lands on under the bridge to see Victor drinking Modelo. Modelo time? Asks is Yuku. Modelo time. Answers Victor as he tosses his Yuku a bottle which is Yuku drinks under his bandana. Do you think Katana's gonna show up soon? Asks is Yuku. I'm sure I will. Calls Katana's voice from behind is Yuku. Good to see ya. Says is Yuku. Hey. Says Victor as he nods to Katana. It's nice to see both of you. Says Katana as he makes his way to a couch and sits down. Izuku takes a seat on an open couch before saying, So what do we go over first? We discuss quirks. Says Katana. Actually I was thinking we could get you a new name. Katana is kinda boring. Says Victor. Speed Demon. Says Izuku. I'm not sure about that. Says Victor. It's cheesy, tacky, and frankly overdone. That being said come up with something better that isn't taken by a memorable character. Says as Yuku. Flash taken Sonic taken Dash taken Quickster taken Speedo Sound Sonic taken you fucking serious? Um hum. Alright. It's fine just call me Speed Demon. Although I'm sure that's taken too. Says Katana, Speed Demon, it is. Says as Yuku. Victor lets out an indignant noise mixed with a Mutter that sounded vaguely like the fuck okay can we discuss quirks now? Asks Speed Demon. Sure. I'll go first. I have a wolf form that I fight in. I'm strong, fast, I have claws, and fangs. Also I have a bear form that's just wolf from but stronger that I can't hold for too long before I get burnt out. Says Victor. Seems straightforward but helpful. Says as Yuku. What can you do? Asks. Victor. I have super strength, speed, regeneration, senses, claws, fangs, and a transformative ability that lets me turn into a bat. Also I'm gonna need to drink the blood of every villain we knock out. It's the only thing that can keep me fed. Says is Yuku, what about you speed demon? I'm just fast. That's it, just fast. Says speed demon. Sounds great. 
says is Yuku, now that that's out of the way I'd like to discuss how we plan on splitting the money we take from villains. I'm fine with money. I'm retired now I've got everything set for me. Says Victor. I come from a wealthy family. I don't really need money. Says Speed Demon. Okay well I'm gonna go broke paying bills so I'm gonna take all the money. Any objections? Asks is Yuku. It's fine. Says Speed Demon. You do what you need to. Says Victor. Thanks fellas. Says is Yuku. So what now? Asks Victor. I've got a target we could go after. Suggests Speed Demon. Sounds great. What's he done to get our attention? Asks is Yuku. He robs people late at night in a small part of the city away from most of the foot traffic. He doesn't let them live. Says Speed Demon. What's his quirk? Asks is Yuku. He salivates fast. But, I'd be more worried about the revolver he carries. Says Speed Demon. No problem. There's three of us. Says Victor. Yeah, lead the way. Says is Yuku. A little while later is Yuku, Victor and Speed Demon were in downtown Mustafu. Hopping from roof to roof looking for a certain thief. That's him. Says Speed Demon while looking down on a back alley. Katsuki, you want to take the lead on this? I know you've got a lot more experience in the field. Says Victor. Yeah, I'll take him. Watch and learn old man. Says is Yuku. Little shit. Mutters Victor. Is Yuku jumps down into the alley behind the thief. I, yo chief. I need directions. Calls out is Yuku. The thief turns around and is Yuku jogs over. Can you tell me how to get uptown? Asks is Yuku. The thief squints at is Yuku, finally noticing what he's wearing. Shit. Ketsu says the thief before as Yuku flies forwards, grabs him and slams him into a wall. The impact knocked the gun out of his hand. As Yuku throws him onto the ground. The thief crawls towards his gun but doesn't quite make it before as Yuku kicks it away from him. As Yuku grabs him by the collar and puts his pistol up to the villain's head. It's a lot harder being the one with the gun to his head isn't it? Drop your wallet. You got money right? You been stealing so fucking much you gotta have some on you. Says as Yuku. The villain starts crying. Hell are you crying for bitch? Just give me the damn money. Says as Yuku. The villain drops his wallet onto the ground. As Yuku throws him down while making sure his gun is still pointed at him. You're disgusting. You take from others and cry when you get robbed. Well I guess you'll have plenty of time to cry in jail. Says is Yuku before kicking the villain in the head and knocking him out. Fucking pussy as Yuku looks back at Victor and Speed Demon before saying, you can come down. As Yuku looks through the wallet and takes some money before putting the wallet back in the man's pocket. As Yuku then proceeded to bite the man, in the shoulder and drink from him. Jesus, kid. Says Victor. Just puttin' on the show for ya. It does piss me off though. I mean seriously if you're gonna rob and kill innocent people at least have a fucking spine when you get caught. Says as Yuku. I get it. He doesn't deserve to cry about this. Says Victor. Exactly. Says as Yuku. I think this will be it for tonight. I'll take him to jail. You, too have a nice night. Says Speed Demon. Have a nice night. Says Victor. See ya. Says as Yuku. Think we can do this again tomorrow night? Asks Victor. Nah, I'm busy tomorrow night. I gotta head home now. You have a nice night. Says as Yuku. You too kid. Says Victor. As Yuku started to work his way back home. He hadn't slept in a while and he figured he'd really need to tonight. He's got a big day ahead of him tomorrow. Chapter 23. Today's the day. Thinks Toga excitedly. Toga is currently on her way to his Yuku's room so she can wake him up and get him ready for his concert tonight. She opens the door to find his Yuku's bed empty. She looks around the room but sees nobody. Where is he? Thinks Toga. Toga heads downstairs to ask Dobby if he knows where his Yuku is. Hey Dobby. 
says Toga. Sup? Says Dobby. Where's Izu baby? Asks Toga. He said something about bringing a friend or two to the concert. Says Dobby. I wonder who he's gonna bring? Asks Toga. Maybe the vigilantes. Says Dobby. Maybe. Replies Toga. With his Yuku should I bring the vigilantes? Nai just met them. I won't show em just yet. Thinks is Yuku. Is Yuku is currently driving to Hatsum Labs to invite her to the concert. He gets to her labs and tries rings the doorbell. Who is it? Calls a speaker. It's me, is Yuku. Says is Yuku. Oh, cool. Come in. Says Hatsum as the door opens on its own. Damn. You've fixed this place up. Says is Yuku as he walks across Hatsum's lab which is far better equipped than last time. It keeps me busy. By the way you're the vigilante right? Asks Hatsum. Oh, yeah. But, don't tell anybody. Says is Yuku. I won't. Also do you need support gear? Asks Hatsum. No, I have a supplier. Says is Yuku. It should be me. Says Hatsum. I would pick you but my supplier is also my informant and said supplier wouldn't want me getting support gear from anybody else. Says as Yuku. So that's how you found so many hideouts so fast. Says Hatsum. Yeah, at this rate I'm gonna hit triple digits for arrested villains pretty soon. Says as Yuku. Yeah, good job on that. By the way did you come here for anything specific or did you just want to hang out? Asks Hatsum. Well I have a piece of paper for you cataloging how my top speed has increased as well as my lifting capacity. That and I wanted to invite you to a concert. Says as Yuku. Oh thanks for that. I'll put that by, the computer. Says Hatsum as she puts the paper by her computer, so is this your way of coming on to me? because I'm pretty sure you had a girlfriend. No I wouldn't cheat on her. She'd kill me, you, and just about everyone in a 5 mile radius of here. Says is Yuku, I just thought you'd like to get out of the lab and enjoy yourself. Well normally I'd say no, but I don't have much to work, with right now. I use most of my material fixing up the lab. I've ordered more but it won't be here for a while so sure I'll come. That's great. It's at the amphitheater at Karuskand Park. At 7 o'clock. I'll be there with friends. I'll introduce you to them. Says as Yuku. Sounds good. Now get out I have stuff to do. Says Hatsum. Alright. I have to do a couple of things anyway. Says, is Yuku as he leaves. Is Yuku gets back in his car and starts driving to Ruby's house. She gets weekends off so he thinks she'll be able to come. He pulls up to her house and knocks on her door. Hey kiddo. What's going on? Asks Ruby. I'm gonna play in a concert, with the bass guitar you gave me. Do you want to come? Asks is Yuku. That sounds fun. I'll come. When is it? Asks Ruby. Tonight at, 7. At the Karuskand Park Amphitheater. Says is Yuku. It would be nice to have been told about this earlier but I've got nothing to do today. So I'll be there. Also oh my god you're gonna be a rock star. Says Ruby. Everyone says that. I even done anything yet. Says as Yuku. It's because you have main character energy. Says Ruby. Explain. Replies as Yuku. You're a vigilante. You got turned into. A monster that thrives off human blood and the first thing you do is help people. You're about to go on stage and perform with a bass guitar that belonged to a man who lived long enough to see every single war recorded in human history. That sounds like an anime plot. Says Ruby. When you put it like that you have a point. Said point terrifies me. Says as Yuku. What? Why? Asks Ruby. Who dies in this anime? Does it have a happy ending? Asks is Yuku. Okay, I see your point. Instead of thinking about that let's work on your look for when we get you on that stage. You need to grow your hair out. It'll take like two seconds. Says Ruby. I like my hair. Says is Yuku. Well we can cut it off and have you grow it back in like 30 seconds. Says Ruby. Good point. 
How do I grow my hair? asks, is Yuku. Just imagine yourself, with a flowing mane of green hair. Says Ruby. I'm on it. Says is Yuku. A second later is Yuku's hair isn't the big puff ball on top but a luscious flowing mane that reaches down past his chest. Great now pull it all behind your back. Says Ruby. At this point in their conversation is Yuku and Ruby were in Ruby's house and Ruby places is Yuku in front of a mirror. Okay. I actually really like this, says is Yuku. You look like a proud fucking lion. Says Ruby making her voice gravely. I feel like a proud fucking lion. Says is Yuku. Alright. Is there anything else we should do to make you look and feel like the star you are? Asks Ruby. Well Grun suggested it at too. Says is Yuku. Hell yeah, you little delinquent. You have anything in mind? Asks Ruby. I was thinking I could get pentagrams on, the back of both of my hands. Says is Yuku. Oh hell yeah, that's cool and edgy. Says Ruby. Yeah, but the concert's tonight. I don't think there's enough time for me to get the tattoo. Says is Yuku. Is there anything else you have to do today? Asks Ruby. I was gonna practice my song. Says is Yuku. Let's not do that and get you a tattoo instead. Says Ruby. Okay, sure. Says is Yuku. Oh, but, before we do that, I have a gift for you. Says Ruby. Oh what is it? Asks is Yuku. It's a gun. It belonged to Vlad. All your gifts from me are gonna be hand-me-downs. Says Ruby. It's still a gun. Says is Yuku, and I like those. It's an old revolver. It was actually made in 1873. Says Ruby as she opens a drawer. What's it called? Asks is Yuku. It's the Uriti Cattleman. Most people just call, it the Cattleman's Revolver. Says Ruby as she pulls a gun belt out of the drawer. Vlad kept it in good condition over the years. You sure you want to give this to me? Asks is Yuku. Yeah, I'm keeping his cooler guns. Says Ruby as she pulls a gun off the belt and hands it to is Yuku. The revolver has a white handle with a gold frame and hammer. The trigger, barrel, and chamber were made with blue, steel. It's beautiful. Says is Yuku. I thought you'd like it. Says Ruby. Okay now we've got to go. We don't have that much time to get you a tattoo. The guy I trust for this is kinda far off. Says Ruby. Then let's go. Says is Yuku. The two hop into is Yuku's car and start driving out with Ruby telling is Yuku where to turn. It takes a couple of hours for them to get there. When they get there they, describe what they want, to the artist. His name is Morris, he's nice and gives lollipops like a doctor. They get the tattoo and drive to is Yuku's house so they can pick up the gang and go to the concert. Hey babe let's go. We're a little short on time. Says is Yuku. What happened to your hair? Asks Toga. I'll explain. Later let's go. Says is Yuku while brushing his hair to the side. What, happened to your hand? Asks Toga. Tattoo. Now let's go. Says is Yuku. You're not going on stage dressed like that. Says Ruby. You serious? Asks is Yuku. She is. Wear this. Says Toga as she throws a red plaid long sleeve shirt and black jeans at is Yuku. A minute later is Yuku's dressed. How do I look? Asks is Yuku. If we weren't pressed for time I'd fuck you right now. Says Toga. Can you calm down for like five minutes? Asks is Yuku. I brought Grin. Calls Dobby. Great let's go. Says is Yuku. The six of them pile into is Yuku's car barely managing to fit, and there isn't a single comfortable person in the car except for Toga who is currently pressed tightly against is Yuku. The drive is fairly short but it felt way longer than it had any right to. Grin can you get everything ready? Asks, is Yuku. On it. Says Grun as he jogs behind the stage. Follow me. Says is Yuku as he guides his group to a table he sees Hatsum sitting at. Everyone this is Hatsum. She's my friend. She knows I'm a vigilante so don't worry about what you can and can't say. 
Okay gotta go, bye. Says is you could quickly before running off in the same direction as Grin. Yo Grin are we good? Asks is you could. Yeah, we, we're almost late so you're gonna be playing last. Says Grin. Oh boy, nothing like having to top literally everybody here who goes on before me. Says is you could. You'll do fine kid, just go out there and play. Says Grin. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll do what I can. Oh, and when I win you get me my money. Says as you coo. That's the spirit kid. I'm gonna go sit with the rest of the gang. Says, grin. Have fun down there. Says as you coo. Knock him dead kid. Says grin as he makes his way out to everyone else. The other performers that went before as you coo were pretty good. Some of them had Izuku a little worried but by the time he was supposed to get up there he was confident that he could actually win this. He walks onto the stage with his guitar in hand. He looks around and makes eye contact with Toga before winking at her. He begins strumming his guitar to the tune he memorized. La da 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 da, I'm gonna bury you in the ground. La da 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 da, I'm gonna bury you with my sound. I'm gonna drink the red from your pretty pink face, sorry I don't treat you like a goddess, is that what you want me to do? Sorry I don't treat you like you're perfect, like all your little loyal, subjects do, sorry I'm not made of sugar, am I not sweet enough for you? Is that why you always avoid me? That must be such an inconvenience to you, well, I'm just your problem, I'm just your problem, it's like I'm not even a person, am I? I'm just your problem well, I shouldn't have to justify what I do I shouldn't have to prove anything to you I'm sorry that I exist, I forget what landed me on, your blacklist but I shouldn't have to be the one that makes up with you so. Why do I want to? Why do I want to? I'm just your problem, I know. I'm just your problem. Oh ho 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 I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just. I'm just. Your problem. Well. I'm just your problem. I'm just your problem. It's like I'm not even a person, am I? I'm just your problem. So. Why do I want to? Why do I want to? It is so pointless because, I'm just your problem. After Izuku's song is sung the crowd starts cheering. Izuku notices his cheers were a little louder than the rest and took that as a good sign. Izuku throws up a rock and roll hand sign making sure he shows off his tattoo. He sticks his tongue out slightly for the crowd to see and heads off stage. Izuku's friends place their votes and head backstage to talk to him. When they get to him he's smiling from ear to ear. Hey guys. Says Izuku. You were incredible. Says Toga as she dives in for a hug. I felt incredible. Says Izuku. Good job kid. I think you might have won. Says Grin. Oh, I know I won. Says as Yuku. That's the spirit. Says Hatsum. I'm proud of you kid. Says Ruby. Oh it's all you. You gave me the magic guitar. Says as Yuku. Did you write that? Asks Hatsum. Yeah. I did. I'm proud of it. Says as Yuku. Are you working on anything else? Asks Hatsum. I've got a couple ideas. Says as Yuku. Kid the voting's over. They're gonna announce the winner. Says Grin. That was fast. Says as Yuku. The announcer came on stage and began reading from a small piece of paper. Thank you to everybody who came out here to play or to support. All of our musicians did wonderfully but only one can win the competition and that one is. Is Yuku Madraya. Says the announcer. Get out there. Says Grin. Izuku walks on stage and the announcer hands him a check and a trophy shaped like a microphone. Do you want to say something to the crowd? Asks the announcer. Sure. Says Izuku. To the dot 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 200 ish people that showed up here, thank you for coming. I plan on continuing to make music so keep your ears open for me. Thank you all once again for showing up. Says Izuku before handing the mic to the announcer and heading off stage. That was so fun. These people like my music. Says Izuku, but I've been going all day. I think I'm ready to head home.
is Yuku Madraya. Calls an unknown voice, is Yuku turns around to see a girl with purple hair and headphone jacks coming out of her earlobes walking towards him. What can I do for you? Asks is Yuku. Well, it's just. I really like your music. I think it has a lot of soul to it. I was just wondering if. Well. Says earphone girl. Yeah want an autograph? Asks is Yuku. Yes. Please. Says earphone girl. All right what am I signing? Asks is Yuku. Could you sign my sleeve? Asks earphone girl. Sure can. Says is Yuku as he takes her marker and signs her sleeve. So we've done all this talking but I still haven't got your name. Kyoka Jiru. Says Jiru. Well Jiru, can I expect to see you at more of my shows when I get him? Asks is Yuku. Jiru nods in response. That's good to hear. I should make a Twitter for fans like you if I ever get any. Or an Instagram. Says is Yuku. Good idea. Says Toga from behind is Yuku. Well, Jiru. It's been fun, but I've been busy all day and I'm wiped. So I'll see you at my next appearance wherever that is. Says is Yuku before leaving. Is Yuku slept on the way home because he let Grin drive. Chapter 24. Is Yuku was running down to the gas station to buy a lighter because he forgot his old one at his concert. When he went back he couldn't find it, so he decided to get a new one. He went in and purchased a cigarette lighter. The metal kind that opens up. It had silver sides with a white front and back, there was a four-leaf clover on both sides. It's like a lucky charm. Thinks is Yuku. Is Yuku was about to leave when he saw a tall blonde man that looks vaguely familiar. Holy shit that's skinny all might. Do I talk to him? Should I? I kinda hated him for a while, but after what muscular did to me I get why he said no. I should say something. What do I say? Hey, Mr. I'm not dead no I can't say that. I'll just talk to him. Thinks is Yuku. Hey man how've you been? Asks is Yuku. Um, do I know you? Asks All Might. I was the skinny short kid that dove head first at that sludge villain, and got sent flying. Says is Yuku. All Might coughs out a little blood in surprise, I remember you. I've actually wanted to talk to you after that whole thing. You busy? Asks is Yuku. Well apart from filling my truck with gas, no I'm not. Says All Might. Cool, also I never caught your name. Says is Yuku. Oh, it's Tashi Norayagi. Says All Might. Nice to meet you Mr. Yagi. My name's is Yuku by the way. Says is Yuku. Nice to meet, you young is Yuku. Says All Might. Where did you want to talk? Asks is Yuku. I hadn't thought of that. I know a nice little cafe near here. Says All Might. I never took you for a cafe man. Says is Yuku. Most people don't. Anyway, you want to get in? I'll take us there. Says All Might. I'd say no to anybody else, but sure let's go. Says is Yuku wonderful. Says All Might. About 10 minutes later, Izuku and All Might were sitting across from each other at a cafe. Both were drinking tea. Izuku was only drinking because he didn't want to be rude. So how've you been? Asks Izuku. I've been doing well, sometimes I'm a little sore from my injuries but I still enjoy myself. Says All Might, how have you been? Since that thing with the sludge villain. I heard your injuries were extensive. I pulled through. Barely, but I made it. I was actually in a comatose state for about three days. Since then I've got a job. I moved out and live with my homie and my new girlfriend. Also I got a girlfriend. Says is Yuku. Aren't you a little young for that? Asks All Might. People younger than me get laid. Says is Yuku. I meant moving out. Says All Might as he wipes away blood he involuntarily let out. Oh that. I don't think it's as common where you're from, but it's not uncommon out here. Says is Yuku. Okay, well what kind of job do you have? Asks All Might. I sell used cars. Says is Yuku. Wow you're doing good for yourself. Says All Might. 
Yeah, I am. Says Izuku proudly. Do you still consider being a hero? Asks All Might. Well, kinda. I'm not too sure. I think it's like you said. I don't think I could become a hero without a quirk. Maybe someone else could but not me. Says Izuku. What if you could get a quirk? A strong one, one that would let you be a hero. Says All Might. Maybe. Even with a quirk there are just some people you can't beat. Says Izuku while thinking back on his fight with Muscular. Am I willing to fight people stronger than I am to help others? Yes, but are other heroes? What do you mean? Asks All Might. Back then, there were heroes everywhere but you and I were the only people to move in and help. I think lots of people that are heroes still need to pursue the idea of heroism. Says Izuku. That's a very interesting thought process young man, but if you wouldn't mind, with a yes or a no, do you want to be a hero? Asks All Might. Izuku, sits and thinks for a second, I honestly don't know. There is a lot to unpack with a question like that and I'm only now beginning to question heroes. It has to be a lot to think about. Says All Might. It is. Says Izuku. If you decide you want to become a hero call me I can help. Says All Might as he slides his phone with his number across the table. Maybe I'll take you up on that. Offer. But I still don't know just yet. Says Izuku. Well, just think about it. Says All Might. I will, but I should be going now. I want to visit my mother today. Says Izuku. I should probably get going too. Says All Might. I thought you said you weren't busy. Says Izuku. I wasn't but I have somewhere to be. Says All Might, although I do have some time. Would you like a ride? Yeah. That would be great. Says Izuku. All Might pays for the tea they drank and the two get in the truck. So where exactly do you have to be? Asks Izuku. Well, I actually have a girlfriend. I never thought I'd have time for that but with me only being able to work three hours a day, I've made time. Says All Might. Good for you man. Says Izuku. So where am I taking you? Asks All Might. The. Nabu apartment complex. Says Izuku. Oh, wow that's where I was going. Says All Might. Well that's convenient. Says Izuku. A little while later Izuku and All Might are walking up the stairs in the apartment complex, they reach the third floor. Well this is my stop. Says Izuku. Well this is my stop. Says All Might at the same time. Oh, cool same floor says Izuku. The two walk down the hall until they reach room 5. This is my stop. Says Izuku. This is my stop. Says All Might at the same time. Both All Might and Izuku looked confused, nervous, and generally bamboozled until it finally snapped into Izuku's head what was happening here. No. Says Izuku. Um. Says All Might. No. Says Izuku but louder. I'm sorry, says All Might. No, says Izuku even louder. My boy, starts All Might. I'm not your boy. What the fuck Yogi, you're dating my mom. She didn't even tell me she had a boyfriend. What the hell man, says Izuku. My boy, I'm sorry, says All Might. Don't fucking call me that. What the hell Yogi. I'm gonna hurt you in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. For how much it's gonna hurt me, and it will hurt me, it's gonna hurt you a whole lot worse. Says Izuku as he takes a step towards All Might, who steps further back. Suddenly the door opens and Inko stares at the two of them in confusion. Hi mom. Izuku says with an extremely strained and forced smile, I've got a question. Inko looks back and forth between the two of them and notices Mr. Yagi looks terrified. What kind of question? Asks Inko, as Yuku begins to sputter out what sounds like the start of several questions yet none of them are intelligible. I see you've met Mr. Yagi. Says Inko. I have, indeed. Says is Yuku moodily. Why don't you two come in? Asks Inko as she leads the two boys to the living room, 
I'm gonna go make some tea. I think we'll have a lot to talk about. As Yuku and Mr. Yagi sit down around a coffee table. Facing each other. As Yuku glares at him. All Might just sits there looking uncomfortable. I'm gonna hurt you. Whispers is Yuku. Don't be rash. Says All Might. As Yuku puts his hand in his pants and pulls out the handle to his pistol, making sure that All Might can see it. All Might spits out a little blood and his eyes go wide as is Yuku puts the gun back in his pants. On God I'll do it. Says, is Yuku. He acts so different when he's mad. Thinks All Might. Hello boys. Says Inko as she carries a tray of tea to the coffee table. Thank you, mom. Says is Yuku as he takes a cup of tea. All Might nods to her as he takes his cup. So, I'm sure you have questions. Ask anything you like. Says Inko. How long has this been happening? Asks is Yuku as he gestures to All Might. Almost a year, replies Inko. Why was I not informed of this? Asks is Yuku. I didn't think you'd like it and wanted to break it to you under better circumstances. Replies Inko. I understand. Look, I. Ugh. I'm happy for you, you know, this is great. At the same time I have a powerful urge to harm Mr. Yagi. Says as Yuku. Are you going to hurt him? Asks Inko. Honestly. I might. I probably won't, only because I, can tell you don't want me to, but I still might. Says as Yuku. I'm gonna have to ask you not to. Says Inko dot 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 that's fine. I understand. Says as Yuku. Thank you. Says Inko and All Might. That being said, I need to talk with him. One on one. I won't fight him but if I did I'd win. Says as Yuku. Um, well I'm not entirely sure if that thing about you hurting him was a joke. I think it was but, I'm not certain. Says Inko. It's fine. It's a good joke. You did a good job teaching him about humor. Says All Might. Well, alright. I'll make more tea. I was stressed about this conversation and drank it all. Says Inko as she leaves towards the kitchen. Does she know? Asks is Yuku. No. Replies All Might. You dumb ass. That's my mother. You've got enemies man. You could get her hurt. I'm not upset that she's dating. Well actually I'm livid in a way I can't explain, I'm concerned. You have enemies man. If she gets hurt because of you, I swear to god villains will be the least of your concern. You don't have to tell her now. But do it by the end of the week or sometime soon. Says as Yuku. Okay, I'll tell her, but nobody knows about this form. Says All Might. I do. Says as Yuku, nobody else does. Says All Might. Are you sure? Asks is Yuku. Um. Says Yagi. I made more tea. Says Inko thank you mom. Says is Yuku. Thank you. Says All Might. Did you boys work things out? Asks Inko. Yeah, have fun with Mr. Yagi. I'm gonna go home and let all of this sink in. Then I'm gonna come back and talk again later. Oh, and don't have too much fun. Says is Yuku as he gets up and leaves. Izuku walks all the way home from his mom's house. He thinks about today a lot. He doesn't like that very much. Eventually he makes it home, unlocks the door, and steps in. Hey man, how was your walk? Asks Tabi. Izuku walks right past him saying only excuse me. That bad huh? Asks Tabi. Izuku walks to the couch sits down reaches into the storage area under the coffee table and pulls out two bottles of whiskey and downs both of them as fast as he can. Holy shit, it must have been really bad for you to come home like this. What the hell happened? And put down the whiskey, it's only 10 a.m. Says Dobby. All Might is dating my mom and has been for almost a year without me knowing. Says as Yuku. I beg your fucking pardon? Asks Dobby. Chapter 25 so yeah, basically All Might is, dating my mom. Says is Yuku to Dobby and Toga. Hold on, wait a minute, hold your horses, all up, what the actual fuck? Asks Toga. Why did you grab his leg? Asks Dobby. 
I grabbed his pant leg to get his attention and then I was about to fucking die, luckily I caught myself, only to die later that day. Says Izuku. Yeah, that day sounded horrible. Says Toga. Mit, I've had worse. Says Izuku, god damn. Says Dobby. Wait, when, did you have a worse day? Asks Toga. Well, when I was four starts Izuku. Christ. Interrupts Toga. Well actually let me give you some background information. Before I became a monster, I was quirkless. Says Izuku getting Toga to tilt her head and looked at him with shock filled eyes. It's actually why I asked All Might if I could be a hero. But basically I was diagnosed quirkless. And, that was the worst day of your life. Says Toga. No, as I was saying says Izuku before Toga interrupts him again. It gets worse? Asks Toga incredulously. Honestly, it's been going downhill for about 10 years, now can I please finish? Asks Izuku. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Says Toga. So basically my dad found out I was quirkless and whenever mom wasn't looking he would burn or hit me. He told me, if I told mom he'd hurt her too. I never did tell her. She's got enough on her plate as it is. But basically one day dad was done with me and cut me up with a broken beer bottle. He actually bandaged this one up pretty well, probably didn't want mom knowing. Later that day he and mom got into an argument about something and it escalated to him yelling about me being worthless and him leaving. The next day at school the nurse fixed me up, she had a healing quirk. Shit I put that quirk to good use, looking back on the years. Says as you coo. You alright? Asks Toga. Yeah, all that was like 10 years ago. Says as you coo. It's okay to feel hurt. You can tell us says Dobby. I don't feel that much about the whole situation, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. Says Izuku. Why, not? Asks Toga. Izuku scoffs, people don't talk about emotions. Seriously who does that? Most people, who told you people don't talk about their emotions. Asks Dobby. Izuku looks at him like he's full of shit, like, everyone I've ever met. Talking about emotions make a weak. It really doesn't. Says Dobby. Yes, it does. Says Izuku. No, man it doesn't. Says Dobby. You're whack as shit, Dobby. Says Izuku. I've talked with you about emotions. Says Dobby. Talking about events that make you feel strongly isn't the same as talking about those feelings. Says Izuku. I mean. I guess. Says Dobby. Izuku looks down at his phone before sighing, it's getting late. I've got to go meet with the vigilantes. We're gonna hit up a small group that Speed Demon told me about. Says Izuku. See, ya later. Says Dobby bye, Izuku. Says Toga. See ya later, also leftovers are in the fridge. Says Izuku as he heads out to meet Victor and Katana. Izuku makes his way to Victor's bridge. He gets there to see some old homeless man sitting in Victor's usual spot. Uh, hey there. Says Izuku. The old homeless man wakes up and transforms into a wolf man. So that's what you look like normally, says Izuku. Yeah, but please don't tell anybody. Says Victor. You look like Dolph Lundgren but with gray hair and a beard. Says Izuku. Who? Asks Victor. Dolph Lundgren, he played Ivan Drago. Says Izuku. No idea. Says Victor. He man, 1989 Punisher, he played in Sharknado 5. Says Izuku. Okay, first you can't hit me with people from 1989. It's 2224, second, what on God's green earth is a, Sharknado? Asks Victor. It's a tornado that sucks up sharks and throws them at people. Says Izuku. What's next a movie about singing chipmunks? Asks Victor. Boy, do I have some news for you. Says Izuku. No fucking way. Says Victor. Evening gentlemen. Says Speed Demon who is just now showing up. Hey Speedy. Says Izuku. Evening. Says Victor. You all ready to get going? 
asks is Yuku, yeah, let's go. Says Victor. Speedy who are we going after? Asks is Yuku. Speed Demon begins to lead the way while he fills his Yuku and Victor in on their soon to be opponents, we're gonna be hitting up a group of three. My informant found the leader's house and will be going there. The leader has a shark head, the others have reinforced bones and temporary invisibility. They can only be, invisible for 10 seconds at a time followed by 5 seconds of visibility. That's not too bad. Says as Yuku. We can handle it. Says Victor. What did they do to get us after Rem? Asks is Yuku. Selling drugs. Says Speed Demon. That's not that bad. Says as Yuku. They lace it with cyanide. Says Speed Demon. Why didn't you start with that? That's a much better reason to lead with than drug, dealing. Says as Yuku. A little while later the three of them were outside a decent sized house in one of the poorer neighborhoods. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Says as Yuku. As Yuku jumps over the fence into the backyard. Victor and Speed Demon wait for half a minute. Is he okay? Asks Victor. The front door opens slowly and they see as Yuku looking at them and motioning for them to be, silent and follow him. They see two of the villains sitting on the couch watching baseball. Is Yuku sneaks closer to the couch but feels a hard object hit the back of his head and hears glass shatter. The shark man gets up and jumps at Is Yuku trying to bite his neck but only getting his right shoulder. Is Yuku pries open the shark man's mouth and headbutts him before throwing him to Victor who clotheslines him with the right hook. Is Yuku turns to see Speed Demon and Bone Boy too as Is Yuku calls him staring each other down. Is Yuku jumps over the couch and tackles Bone Boy before punching him three times in the face and knocking him out. Where's the sneaky guy? Asks Is Yuku. Right behind you. Says an unknown voice. Is Yuku feels a stabbing pain in his lower back, he whips around to stop his assailant only to see nothing. His hand shoots out and grabs at air. Seconds later a man becomes visible with his Yuku's hand wrapped around his neck. You think you're fucking funny? You think you're slick, don't you? Asks is Yuku. The man grunts in response. Could you explain to me why you thought that was a good idea? Asks is Yuku. The man opens his mouth to speak but is Yuku clenches his fist causing the man to make a choking sound. Yeah. That's what I thought. Says Is Yuku before punching this guy in the face and knocking him out. Is Yuku pulls the beer bottle out of his side and lets his regrowing muscle fibers push the glass shards out. You all wanna call it tonight? Asks Is Yuku. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. Says Victor. I can take care of the rest. Says Speed Demon. Alright, gimme, a minute to see what I can find. Says is Yuku before looking for money, food, alcohol, cigarettes, or weed. Given what these people do to the drugs they sell he decides not to take the weed he finds. Alright, see you all soon. Bye kid. Says Victor. I'll see you soon. Says Speed Demon. Is Yuku starts to make his way back home to Dobby and Toga. He hopes to make it home quickly. He doesn't. He's about a quarter of the way home when he hears somebody call for help. When he gets to where he heard the call he sees an elderly woman backing away from a man covered in scales. Is Yuku thinks he has an alligator quirk before noticing his horns. Shit it's a dragon. Thinks Is Yuku. Hey there. Says Is Yuku as he jumps down from a nearby rooftop. Ma'am, now would be a good time to leave. The woman, listens and leaves as fast as she can. Really man? That was an old woman. Says as Yuku. I didn't want to do it. Exclaims the man. Is someone forcing you to do this? Asks is Yuku. It's my work. It makes me hurt people. Says the dragon. Hurt or kill? Asks is Yuku. It tells me to hurt but nobody's survived. Says the dragon. Alright, come on. Says is Yuku while motioning the dragon forward. What? Asks the dragon. I heal fast. I can take it. Just try not to kill me. Says as Yuku. I can't. Says the dragon. Look man, I know you're scared. 
It's fine, just do it. I can take it and I won't hurt ya. Says Izuku. I shouldn't. Says the dragon. Listen buddy, you're either gonna hurt me or some poor innocent bastard who didn't see it coming. So come on. It's fine. Says Izuku. Oh okay. If you're sure. Says the dragon. It's fine. Says Izuku. Roughly 10 minutes later Izuku was on the floor in a pool of his blood with expressionless eyes. The dragon comes back to his senses and looks at Izuku horrified. Oh my god. I killed him. I fucking killed him. Says the dragon. I'm not dead just yet. Says Izuku. Oh, thank god. Says the dragon. You good? Asks Izuku. Yeah, for like a year. Says the man. That's great. Listen man call this number, he'll help you. He's a hero he's real good at this kind of thing. Says Izuku as he hands the man Aizawa's number, I'm tired, I'm going home now. Bye, and thanks for everything. Says the dragon. It's fine brother. Says Izuku as he walks off clutching a claw mark on his stomach he isn't gonna heal anytime soon. Izuku continues on his walk home when he notices a familiar smell. He looks up and to his right. Aizawa. He asks. No response. You can't hide. I can smell you. Says Izuku. Aizawa comes out from behind an air vent. Bullshit. Take a shower man. I'm serious, you actually smell. Says Izuku. I'll shower later. Says Aizawa. You gonna try to arrest me? Asks Izuku. I might. What if I do? Asks, Aizawa. I'll rock your shit. Replies Izuku. Not coming quietly huh? Asks Aizawa. No sir. Replies Izuku. Aizawa throws his scarf forward and wraps around Izuku. Izuku buries his feet in the ground so Aizawa can't pull him. Aizawa pulls himself forward using his scarf. Izuku barely blocks a kick aimed at his head. Aizawa uses Izuku's arms as a springboard and jumps straight up. He pulls himself down and drives his knee into the top of Izuku's head. Izuku swings at him trying to get some distance. He hears a whip crack and feels something wrap around his neck. Next thing he knows is he's getting pulled off the roof and falling. He hit the ground with a thud and scrambles to get out of the way of Aizawa who jumped down after him. Seriously? You brought Midnight here? Asks Izuku, hey kiddo. Says Midnight before swinging her whip at him and, catching him over his left eye. Izuku rushes forwards and starts swinging at the two of them Aizawa dodges everything he throws. This wasn't anything like the last time they fought. Izuku takes hits to his joints and ribs from Aizawa and breaking off to rush Midnight. She dodges a lot but he manages to trip her. Right before he knocks her out he gets wrapped up by Aizawa and thrown into the air, shit. He calls out. Suddenly he feels as if the world around him is exploding. Everything is loud. Everything hurts. Izuku sees present Mick out of the corner of his eye. He falls. He doesn't bother catching himself. He just covers his ears and takes it. When he lands he notices he's surrounded by a thick pink mist that he registers as Midnight's quirk. He gathers all of his strength and lunges, at present Mick, catching him off guard and knocking him out with a hard right to the chin. One down. Mutters Izuku as he turns towards Aizawa and Midnight. Midnight swings her whip at him but this time he catches it and pulled her towards him. He leaps into the air and slams both feet into her face. Two down. Says Izuku. You know if your quirks worked on me you'd probably have me by now, I'm aware. Says Aizawa sounding annoyed. AWW someone's a sore loser. Says Izuku. I haven't lost yet. Says Aizawa. You're right. Says Izuku before quickly drawing his revolver and firing off three shots without really aiming. Luckily for him one goes through Aizawa's calf. You can't fight me like that. We both know it. Aizawa struggles to get back up. Think of your son and how he would, feel to see me shoot you again. Says Izuku, I know you want to help me, but get your friend somewhere safe and heal up. I'm gonna be leaving now. Kid wait. Calls Aizawa. 
is Yuku doesn't wait he just keeps walking. He thinks he broke some ribs hitting the ground as hard as he did. He'll take it easy for a while. Or he'll wish he could. He was so close to getting home when someone bumped into him. He turns around to see a terrified looking girl with long white hair, red eyes, and a horn on the side of her head. She's covered head to toe in bandages. Are you okay? Are you lost? Asks Izuku. Before she can say anything a new voice calls out from the other side of the ally, Iri. Izuku turns to see a tall man with brown hair and a beak-like mask that reminds him of a plague doctor. He recognizes him as one of the villains Grin warned him about. Ah shit. Thinks Izuku. Chapter 26. A ah, shit. Thinks Izuku. Hey mister, this your daughter? Asks Izuku. It is. Replies Overho. Izuku thinks that was his name. She seems scared. Are you alright? It was Iri right? Asks Izuku. Iri nods. Well are you alright Iri? You seem scared and you're cut. Says Izuku. She's scared because, she's been disobedient. Says Overhaul. Well she seems hurt. I know a doctor who lives near here. She be down here in no time. Says Izuku. That's remarkably kind of you but I've got medical supplies at home. Says Overhaul. Yuri starts shaking by Izuku's leg so he squats down to her. I'd really feel better if I saw her get help. Says Izuku. Iri leans into him. Well it really isn't your business. You should learn to keep to yourself. Says Overhaul. Izuku wraps one arm around Iri. Sorry, but I'm not a very fast learner. Says Izuku. Iri, come back here. Says Overhaul. Despite what Izuku was expecting Iri turned back to Overhaul with tears in her eyes. Don't call Izuku a little louder than intended, Iri I know we just met but trust me. I'll get you out of here. He won't, hurt you, and I'll come out fine. I always do. Iri stops and looks back at him. Now, just what do you think you're doing? Asks Overhaul threateningly. Don't bullshit me. I know who you are and you know who I am. Are you the one leaving this girl all cut up? Asks Izuku. If I am? Asks Overhaul. I'll fucking kill ya. Says Izuku. So narrow minded. You don't even know my plans. Says, Overhaul. I don't care. Says Izuku. Yuri walks towards Izuku. I'm going to cure sickness. Says Overhaul. Izuku puts his leg in front of Iri protectively. I wouldn't give a shit if you were gonna cure cancer. You don't hurt a young girl. Says Izuku. Sacrifices have to be made. Says Overhaul. This is a child. That is not how you do things. Shouts Izuku. With her I can end quirks. They've caused you trouble haven't they? Imagine a world without this sickness, this disease. A world without heroes says Overhaul. I'd like to imagine a world without your ugly ass. Says Izuku. Insult me all you like but you can't deny humans shouldn't have powers. Says Overhaul. Yeah, no shit humans shouldn't have powers. That was a misstep on God's part but so was making you. Says Izuku. There's nothing I can say to make you give her back is there? Asks Overhaul. If I was going to give her back. There'd have to be one thing for you to understand. This is a fucking child. This is a fucking child. This is a fucking child. Says Izuku. I heard you the first time. Says Overhaul. Well hear it again. This is a goddamn child. She deserves to be happy or to have friends. She's stuck, with you. I really ought to kill you. Says Izuku. If you don't give her back I'm going to take her back by force. Says Overhaul. I'm giving you the next 10 seconds to leave before I tear you a hole in your chest. Says Izuku. Don't make me hurt her. Says Overhaul. 1. Says Izuku. You don't have to die here. Says Overhaul. 2. Says Izuku. I can smell your blood. Says Overhaul. 3. Says Izuku. You're too hurt to fight me. Says Overhaul. 4. 
says as you coo. The blood is still flowing from your ribs, says overhaul. 5. Says as you coo. Your regeneration isn't working, says overhaul. 6. Says as you coo. You rely on it too much, says overhaul. 7. Says as you coo. You can't fight without it, says overhaul. 8. Says as you coo. I didn't become the leader of a Yakuza by being weak, says overhaul. 9. Says as you coo. You're one of the only people outside of my gang that think quirks are a sickness. Don't make me kill you, says overhaul. 10. Leave, says as you coo. I can't do that, says overhaul. Izuka whips out his revolver as Overhaul reaches for the wall of the alley. Izuka fires off two shots as Overhaul sets up a wall of concrete to block them. A row of spikes shoot out of the concrete. Izuku grabs Iri with one hand and moves back and out of the way. It's gonna be okay. Whispers Izuku. Please don't get hurt mister. Says Iri. I won't and my name's Katsuki. Says Izuku. Izuku darts to the side with Eerie as another row of spikes come shooting after him. Give her back. Calls overhaul. Eat shit. Shouts Izuku. Another row of spikes come, after Izuku and Eerie. Izuku takes to the air and lands on a rooftop. Hide here. Says Izuku as he points to an air conditioner for Eerie to hide behind. Izuku jumps from roof to roof as fast as he can before jumping back down onto the street. Where did you put her? Asks Overhaul menacingly. Up your ass and to the right. Says as you coo. Don't play games with me. Says Overhaul as he launches more. Spike at his you coo. Shut up, you nut. Shouts his you coo as he dodges over them while closing the distance between himself and Overhaul. Before as you coo can reach Overhaul a wall gets put up between them. As you coo kicks through the wall in midair. When he comes through and lands he looks for overhaul only to see nothing. He hears a footstep behind him and whips around to see overhaul reaching for him. Izuku, ducks under it and claws at overhaul who steps back to avoid it. Neither one of them wants to move in close again. They know that one bad hit could be all it takes to end the fight. Overhaul can't make a move for the ground. He knows Izuku's too fast. None of us have to die here says overhaul don't worry as much as i want to kill you i'm no murderer says as the two continue to circle each other until as slams his left leg into the ground as hard as he can the ground shakes and overhaul loses his footing as darts forwards he was going to go for the head but overhaul put his hands up defensively so as punches him in the chest and knocks the wind out of him and breaks a couple of ribs I ain't doing too bad. Says Izuku, I thought you'd be a lot tougher. Give her, back. Says Overhaul. God you're still on that. Says Izuku. I can't tell if you're sick or not. Says Overhaul. The hell are you talking about? Asks Izuku. Why do you do this? You aren't a hero but you act like one. Says Overhaul. Okay big bird. Says Izuku. Then you go and say something like that. It lacks a hero's professionalism. Says Overhaul. I ain't a hero. I've seen M at work and, I'm not impressed. Says as you coo. You aren't sick. You understand. Says Overhaul. I don't understand a goddamn thing. Come to think of it, there is one thing I understand, and it's that people like you deserve to get their asses beat. Says as you coo. If you don't like heroes, why do you want to help? Asks Overhaul. I may not like heroes but I like heroism. Subtle difference. That and some people, just deserve to get their shit rocked. I know I'm not the greatest guy, I beat people shitless and steal from them granted they are villains, but you're a piece of shit. Says as you coo. I think I'm beginning to understand. You think heroes are a sickness and want to show a way to avoid it. You want to show the world heroes aren't necessary to save people, you are like a vaccine, while I try to cure, those that are already ill. Says Overhaul. Where the hell did I say that? Asks Izuku. 
You may not know what you're doing but I see what's inside. Says Overhaul. What are you a psychologist? I'm not gonna take a psychoanalysis from somebody that matches a brown beak mask with a fuzzy purple collar. Says Izuku. Now that I understand, I'm done here. Iri get down here or tell me where you are, before I kill him. Says Overhaul. Don't calls, Izuku, you haven't even hit me yet. Iri calls overhaul. She ain't coming. Says Izuku. I see. Says overhaul. Before Izuku has any time to react a concrete spike jets out of the ground and rams itself through his stomach. He lets out a low groan but doesn't scream. Blood leaks from his mouth and trickles down his chin under his mask. He staggers backwards breaks off part of the spike and falls to the ground. He isn't moving. Eerie. Get down here now. Shouts overhaul. I'm here. Says Eerie as she comes out from behind the air conditioner. Overhaul makes a stairway for her to walk down. Eerie you know what happens when you don't listen to me. He's dead because you didn't listen. He came here to help you and you killed him. Now come with me. Says overhaul. Tears well in Eerie's eyes. I'm sorry. Sorry isn't going to help. Says overhaul. There's no need to apologize. Says Izuku, cause I ain't dead yet. Well this is surprising. I'm actually glad you're not dead. Says Overhaul. Izuku pushes himself back onto his feet. He's exhausted, bleeding, bruised and broken all over but he's nowhere near done. He re-stepped to the side. I've got one last trick up my sleeve. Says Izuku. Iri steps to the side like he asks and says, Please don't. I don't deserve it. Of course you do. Says Izuku, and as for you, you better block this cause if you don't there won't be a body left. This move was passed down by Master Toothrall for two generations of some of the most powerful fighters I've ever seen. Says Izuku Izuku takes a low stance like he's gonna spring forward. Overhaul, actually looks worried. He throws up a thick concrete and brick barrier around himself on all sides as Izuku darts forwards, but Izuku doesn't go for him. He runs towards Iri grabs her and runs away as fast as his legs will carry him. We've got like 10 seconds before that wall goes down and he realizes what happened. Says Izuku, by that time we'll be long gone. You'll never see him again, thank you. Says Iri as she grips him tighter. Yet don't have to thank me for human decency. Says Izuku, you don't deserve what he does to you. And don't believe what he said to you. He's a bum. After about 5 minutes of aimlessly running around the city. Izuku starts to slow down and make sure he isn't being followed. I think we made it. Says Izuku, he looks down at Hiri and finds her, asleep in his arms. Izuku silently makes his way back home trying not to disturb her. When he finally makes it back home he sees the lights are still on. He walks through the front door. Where were you? Asks Tabi from another room. You were gone for so long. Calls out Toga. Shut up. Says Izuku as he walks into the living room. Who's the kid? Asks Tabi. This is Iri, her dad was hurting her, so I took her away. She's gonna spend the night here and I'm not sure what's gonna happen after that. I'm taking her to my room. Don't look for her, we shouldn't crowd her. Also turn my lights off, y'all don't pay bills. Says Izuku as he walks up the stairs to his room. He drops Iri on his bed, tucks her in and leaves. Izuku takes out his phone dials a number and listens to it ring. Hello. Says, Ruby. Hey. Says Izuku. What are you calling for this late? Asks Ruby. I'm dying. Says Izuku. How bad? Asks Ruby. Hole in my stomach. Kinda big. I'm gonna bleed out soon. Dobby and Toga don't know yet. Says Izuku.